Do you guys want to dominate your games like Nagelsmann inside of FM23? If you do, then do stick around. So guys, it is Josh from FM Scout, and today I'm going to be bringing you my Julian Nagelsmann 4231 tactic. Now this tactic is so fun to use. It dominates pretty much every game you go into. It's a really balanced formation, gets a lot of goals, and also is very solid at the back as well. So sort of everything, I would say just a nice balanced tactic. It eases out a lot of games and you can really control whatever game that you decide to go into. So let's start with Bayern Munich, his current side, and this was an absolute domination. We won the league, we won the Pockel, and also won the German Super Cup, making it a treble winning season in the first year. Sadio Mane with 30 goals, Joshua Kimmich with 18 assists, Manuel Neuer with the best pass completion, and Alfonso Davies with the highest average match rating, scoring 97 goals and only conceding 20. So like I will say, this tactic, in my opinion, the, the words describe it, balanced. It's a perfect balance between knowing when to defend and also being attacking enough to get goals and win games. The Data Hub says this very well as well. 0.59 conceded, which again is very impressive, and you're going to compare that to the attacking side, which is 2.85, so it's a massive over two goal difference compared to what you concede to what you score. So this is pretty much a flawless tactic in this division especially. Um, and I do think as well, as you are going to see, we are going to be testing it with smaller teams, so don't worry, it's not all going to be powerhouse sides. As you will see when you test with a smaller team, it also it does manage to do this. It's a very dominant tactic. We then hop over to Firth in the Bundesliga 2. Now, this team are not expected to go up by any means of the imagination, but we've broken that, we've gone for it, and we have dominated the league with 77 points, which is very impressive in itself. Second best at goals scored and the best at conceding. Again, only 25 conceded in this division, and this is a division where we're not favourites in by any means. It's going to be Horogota coming in with 38 goals and Palou coming in with 12 assists. Go into the data hub. Team attacking, 1.88, so slightly less than what you're going to see at Bayern Munich. But there again, we haven't got the quality that Bayern Munich do have. And also, we're not clear favourites, so that is why the stats are going to drop off a little bit. But if we compare that to goals conceded, 0.74, you're still seeing that we're scoring over double to what we're conceding. And if you do the basic maths, that means you're going to win a lot of games. And that is exactly what we've done. To be conceding this little in this division is very impressive especially considering this isn't a tactic designed purely for defensive capability. Now, we're going to hop over to, let's go over to Salford next. Salford, again, a team which I would say are one of the favourites. They're a very strong side in here, not guaranteed to go up. That is, you know, I don't think anyone can say, oh, they're guaranteed to go up. But 104 points, quite a close position coming in at second with Leighton Orient. But we did manage to win the division and also were the best at scoring goals of 88 Third best at conceding, a few more going in this time. Obviously, it's a different league, different country, slightly harder in my opinion. Third best still, though, conceding 40. Going to be Stephen Mal Mallon coming in, sorry, with 27 goals and also getting the most assists. So this guy was really Mr. Do It All, this division. Going into the data hub, team defending 0.87. So we're still maintaining that thing which I love. Under a goal a game is always my aim. I try and do my best to replicate that across all tactics if I can. And that is exactly what this has done perfectly so far. And then we're going to be scoring 1.91. So we're still scoring virtually double of what we're conceding. And as long as we can take that into every single save, then I am very happy with this. And to be doing this in this division as well, very, very happy. I, I do like to try and... I like to include a side from different sort of countries, different areas. Obviously, this one is a little bit more... Well, to be fair, you've got one in Germany, you've got one in England, you've got one in Italy, then you've got Bundesliga 2, then you've got a lower division in England as well. So we have gone quite global with this, or I say global, three countries, but we are testing different standards of football. And the last two we've got to get into now is going to be Arsenal and Juventus. So the first one. Arsenal is going to be a second place finish behind favourites Liverpool or favourites with City. Obviously, it would probably go Liverpool, Arsenal and City in this game, in my opinion. In real life, I would probably favour Arsenal at the moment because they are absolutely on fire. But in this game, definitely Man City because of Haaland. But let's have a quick look then, actually. Was Haaland, is Haaland still OK on their schedule? I mean, it was. It was something. 
It was something. Is Harland okay? Where is Mr. Harland? Erling Harland. Unhappy. Still got everything fine with him. Why is he unhappy? He's unhappy that he didn't challenge for the Premier Division. That is fair enough. But anyway, let's have a quick look. So I wonder why City were down there. But again, very, very good finishing in second place. Also winning the Carabao Cup against Crystal Palace. Gabriel Jesus coming in with 43 goals. Martin Odegaard with the highest match rating and the most assists. 93 goals ranking us the second best and also the second best at conceding, only letting in 35, which is very impressive. Going into what is going to be the data hub, team attacking 2.45, which I am, again, really happy with because this is the toughest division on world football. You know, it is the toughest division in world football. And the fact that we've gone in and we're still scoring above two goals is something that I can pat myself on the back for. Team defending, still under a goal a game, 0.92. So what we're seeing is a perfect balance of being able to defend and also go forward enough and score on goals. Like I said, I keep saying it, but balanced, balanced, balanced is the perfect way for me to describe this system because it's not an all-out attack style. It's not an all-out defensive style. The 4-2-3-1 typically is just a nice balance all over the pitch style. And sometimes that is exactly what you need. Going into the last test is going to be with Juventus. And let's have a little look here then. We are actually going to be Serie A champions. Not the best in the Cups again. And this one, we did actually concede a few more goals. So I don't know what's going on with that Juventus back line. Because that's the only one which has been not as solid at the back. 106 goals scored. And the eighth worst it conceded, letting in 49. But to be honest, that doesn't even seem like a lot. So I think it's more the fact of there's a lot of defensively solid teams in this division. There's also a lot of teams that play the three slash five at the back. So that's probably why they're conceding fewer goals. It's going to be the main man himself coming in with 58 goals. Di Maria coming in with 18 assists as well. Data hub then. Team attacking. 2.79 goals a game, which is very high for this division, considering what I just said. Obviously, a lot of teams do play quite a negative style. Um, if you look at your, you know, your Mourinho's, for example, the three at the back slash five at the back, teams can be hard to break down in this division. Team defending, above one, which is a little bit disappointing, but I was sort of expecting an after finishing so badly in the, in the rankings. But still, we are scoring way over what we're conceding. And this is the only one which has gone above a goal conceded per game. And to be honest, this is the one which I, you know, I was expecting to do well, but obviously you, Juventus, especially in real life at the moment, you'd probably put Inter Milan, Milan over them. Napoli is, I mean, Napoli are absolutely sensational. So I thought I'd use Juventus just to see exactly where I could get them. And we've come out on top, so I can't really complain. So the game I've picked out for us to have a little look at, mainly because of the goals, is actually going to be the Pockle final against Leverkusen. And it was a very comfortable 5-0 win. So let's have a little look at this. We're going to watch the goals and just see exactly how these chances do get created. We're going to slow it down a little bit. Good ball from Graven Birch, a wonderful run from Komen in behind the back line, and he tucks it into the far right corner. Fantastic ball from Goretzka to find him, and what a beautiful run from Komen it was. On the edge here, into Goretzka, into Graven Birch, the new man himself. Is he going to hit it? He isn't. He's going to use the fullback into Kimmich, into Musiala, and you are going to see that very commonly in the system, by the way, how your fullbacks create the space out wide, but they will bring it back in centrally, and you get so many goals from doing that, using the wide areas, but then revert them back to come inside, and that is where a lot of your players are going to be. As you can see here, there's a lot of players in the box, and you do notice that a lot. We do get involved a lot going forward, and that is why you score so many goals. Simple as that, really. But 2-0 up so far, this is going to be a set piece by the looks of it. Kimmich into Goretzka. Very easy. Out the far post. Poor Markin, really. Goretzka, obviously, quite a, a unit of a guy, to be fair. Quite an easy win for him, and he's never going to miss from there. This is going to be goal number four. It's a good win from Delit in the air. Into Sadio Mane. Wonder ball through into Sane. And then you're going to say Mane again. Takes his time. Beautiful little chip over Haradeki, and that is going to be four. Again, you're seeing how deadly these wingers are at getting in behind enemy lines, causing all sorts of issues, and there's always an option on going forward. There really is. That is going to make it four. We then have Chupa Moting coming onto the field. Taking his time. Again, a wonder ball in behind. Sane making a great run. Is he going to score from there, is he? He is a keeper. A little bit. Should be done a little bit better there, in my opinion. But we're not going to complain. That is going to be goal number five. And that is going to be the final wrapped up in a game which we dominated everything. We had more of the ball. We had more XG. More shots on target. More shots overall. We absolutely dominated that final against... 
quite a decent side in the Bundesliga, to be fair. But that is going to be that match watched. And we're going to go into your favourite part of the video, which is going to be the tactic breakdown. So this is going to be the Nagelsmann 4231. Now, I want to make it clear to you guys, you can download this on the FM Scout website. The link is going to be in the description below. Also, if you guys are enjoying this video so far, be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the FM Scout channel, and do watch some of the other content on the channel. There's loads of stuff coming out from myself and Jake. There's some good videos, so to be sure to have a little binge and have a little watch. But let's break down this tactic. So, positive mentality, in possession, fairly narrow, play out of defence, very important, focus play down the left and, over, uh, and down the right, and overlap right and overlap left. Like I said, these wide areas are very, very crucial. You're going to find that out when you test for yourselves, but you create so much from the wide areas. And then it's going to be a mixture of getting the ball into the box and also what we saw in, I believe, the third goal where you, the fullback or the winger just drifts back in and causes issue after issue. Pass into space, that's how you find these beautiful runs in behind. Shorter pass and directness and a slightly higher tempo with mixed crosses. In transition, counter press, counter, distribute quickly, distribute to anyone on the back line, the centre backs or the full backs, and take short goal kicks. Out of possession, a standard defensive line, high press line of engagement, much more often on the press, and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. So that's going to be that side of the tactic broken down. Now let's go in to the actual player roles. We're going to reverse it. Let's start off with the forward players and go backwards. So the first position is going to be a press and forward on the attack duty. And he is going to be told to be much more often on the press. I'm pretty sure that's common sense. He is a press and forward, shorter passing and shoot more often. On the left hand side, it's going to be an inverted winger on the support duty. Less often, cut inside with the ball and shorter passing. Nice and simple. On the right-hand side, another inverted winger, because we do like watching these wingers sort of come back inside, causing all types of issues, and it's a real key thing about this. Less often, roam from position, shorter passing, and obviously cut inside with the ball. Into the centre, or the more centralised area, the attacking midfielder on the attack duty. I did try him on support, but it's not that enough oomph. So you want him on the attack duty, less often, get further forward, move into channels, roam from position, and shorter passing selected. The two deeper players, the two positions which, in my opinion, you should never tweak because these two work so well amongst a lot of formations. On the left-hand side, you want a box-to-box -box midfielder. Less often and shorter passing selected. Next to him, you want a deep line playmaker. So crucial to finding him runners in behind. And it's just a really, very, very good role inside of this game. And you want him to be less often and shorter passing selected. Going over to the left-hand side, the wing back on the autumn or the attack duty. So I was going to say automatic. Again, they play such a big role in this system, the wing backs. So do, do let them have a license to roam. Let them get involved because trust me, you won't regret it. Balanced on the trigger press, get further forward, sit narrower, run wide with the ball when your team has the ball and shorter passing selected. The ball playing defender on the left hand side, balanced and shorter passing. On the right hand side is going to be exactly the same, balanced and shorter passing. The right back is going to be a wing back, but this one is going to be a little bit more calm. He's going to be on the support duty. Again, my bit of advice would be if your right back's better at going forward than your left back, switch it around. Have your attack and fullback going down the right, have your support going through the left. So you can sort of tweak things like that as you go along. This guy again, balanced, sit narrower, get further forward, run wide with the ball and shorter passing selected. And the last, but definitely not least, the sweeper keeper, just shorter passing selected. And that is going to be the tactic broken down. But guys, that is going to be it for today's video. As I said, you can download this tactic in the description below. It will take you to the FM Scout website and you can simply download. It is a ton of fun to play with. Very dominant across pretty much every league I tested it in, as you have seen. And in my opinion, one of the most balanced tactics I think we're going to see this year. Very good indeed. If you guys have enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like on it. Subscribe to the FM Scout channel. If you're feeling extra generous, you can check out some of my content, which can be found in the description below as well. I upload a lot of tactics on my personal personal channel also check out jake another fantastic creator but that is going to be it for me today guys and i'll see you in the next one